Good morning. My name is David Walker, and um, I have a question for all of the panelists. Um, with the, over the history and time with um, Israel making uh, countless strides, uh, as I was talking to you, Doctor, earlier, removing themselves from the southern Lebanon border, um, coming out of the Gaza Strip, um, can you honestly say that Israel has not made countless efforts to promote peace more so than the Palestinians? And each time that they withdrew themselves from the Lebanon border, from the West Bank, and from the Gaza Strip, uh, they were retaliated with continued violence uh, from the Palestinians. So my question is, honestly, who can you say is, are more advocates for peace? Is it Israel, looking at their track history and what they have done, or is it really the Palestinians? perception is that many of those places where Israel did withdraw from, um, in some of those places it was illegal for them to be there in the first place. So I'm not sure that that was a concession at all in my mind. They, they shouldn't have been there in the first place. Everyone in the world said they shouldn't have been there. And uh, so that really wasn't a concession at all. I'm glad you raised that question. I think uh, I hear this more than anything else wherever I go and talk to people about what's going on. Uh, when, <clears throat> if you study history in the formation of uh, protest groups around the world, either in this country or abroad, they grow out of situations where there is injustice. And if that injustice is not addressed by the leaders, either of the political entity, wherever it might be, or locally, or both, then you're going to have some kind of revolutionary feedback. And I think there are a lot of examples of that. South Africa is one of them. Certainly, uh, the racial situation in this, in this country is another one. Where did the movement take place that brought change? It came out of the church. And nothing would have happened if it hadn't been for the leaders who had a faith that said, the truth will make us free. And we worship a God that believes in mercy and justice and humility. And I think we have to come back to that. I don't care what the issue is. And now who is our neighbor? It's just a mouse click away, a blog away, a Facebook away is our neighbor now. It's not just the one who lives there, but everyone in the world. A year ago, I was found myself speechless before the the assault on Gaza. Um, to speak of a withdrawal from Gaza and then an incredible military assault on a people who are already uh, locked in, imprisoned in the, in the Gaza Strip. 1,400 people killed, um, incendiary weapons used, depleted uranium weapons used, 5,000 people injured. Um, I didn't know what to say, you know. Um, I said, I'm not paying taxes for it anymore. And, uh, and I'm, a, I'm living below taxable income, but if I owe, I don't pay. Um, I'm sort of that level of resistance to that. Um, the occupied territories themselves are a question of uh, justice. That's, that's an illegal occupation from 67 uh, Security uh, Council Resolution 242, uh, which is sort of the basis for the two-state solution, but is rendered completely meaningless uh, by the construction of the wall, by the uh, destruction of villages, uh, by the separation of people from their lands, by the taking of water. Um, when I was in Gaza and this is a while ago, uh, 
um, we visited uh, Rafa camp in the south of Gaza. And at that time, it was kind of a shanty town that extended as far as you could see. I've seen pictures of that since, and it's rubble. It's just rubble. Um, it doesn't barely, it doesn't exist anymore. Um, no, I, I, don't, I don't think Israel's made the gestures for peace or in particular justice. I don't have anything to add to uh, my colleagues' comments. On, uh, in, in, uh, I think the, the answers are clear there. I do want to take the opportunity to address you personally in terms of someone who's made a pilgrimage. Um, and you told me the group that you went with. Um, I think what you see when you go there makes a big difference. Because what you've articulated, David, is the prevailing um, point of view that most Americans have, um, including significantly African Americans, which I think is really interesting, uh, given what I would imagine, I mean, if I were an African American and I went to the Holy Land and saw what I saw in terms of what's happening to people of color at the hands of Euro a European state, I would be scratching my head and saying, wait a minute, I know what this is, what's going on here? And how did, what does this have to do with the Bible that I've been taught? And I think it's good to be able to ask those questions. Seeing is everything. Um, how many Christians make devotional pilgrimages to the Holy Land every year? How many tens of thousands? What a resource, what an educational opportunity, what an opportunity for awakening. If there's one thing that the churches can do, and leadership of the churches can do, it's to take a look at what people see when they go there. I'm fond of saying, you know, the idea is, what's the words that are used? Walk where Jesus walked? What's amazing is that if you go and see what there really is to be seen, you will not only walk where he walked, you'll see what he saw. And you'll come back to your Bibles then and say, I need to read this in a new way, perhaps. So I would encourage you, actually, David, to uh, come with me to uh, the Holy Land next May and June on uh, Interfaith Peace Builders Tour and uh, see what there is to be seen that perhaps when you went with Kufi they didn't show you. <laughs>